so many good parts of that chapter. It seems kind of weird what the sermon's based on tonight, I mean, this, this afternoon, which is actually the names of the people. <laughs> I gave Brother Justin a heads up on this one. I was like, you might want to go over the names if, and make sure you know how to pronounce them. Because a lot of times we look at a list of names in the Bible and kind of skip over them, especially go through like Chronicles and, and all, and you kind of skip over that and think it's not very important. But uh, I'm going to actually talk about that here this afternoon. And just I just titled the message Greetings and Salutations because that's kind of what we see. This is at the very end of the chapter, and a lot of times they'll tag on, oh, by the way, you know, say hello to so-and-so, salute them and those that are in their house and all that stuff. But this, you see this kind of a long list here. And my mind always goes to this, especially when, they, when Paul says, and I don't think he's lying about it, and he says to all these different people that he writes to, he says, oh, and I'm praying for you every day, night and day, without ceasing. And he's just constantly praying. And I've always thought it'd be interesting to, to, to find out one day what Paul's you know, books look like. You know how he... You know, in prison, he's like, I hey, send the parchment, send the books in the parchments. And, you know, I don't know what all he had, but it seems like he had some kind of long uh, prayer list or something, you know, like this, this directory where he would go through all these names. But maybe not. Maybe he had them all in his head. I don't know. And I think often, and this is one of my biggest failures as a Christian, not just even as a pastor, but as a Christian that I wish I could do better and I need to do better. And so hopefully this will this will also uh, motivate me to do something here. But that is just just saturating people in prayer, praying for for people. I mean, that's a big part of what we're supposed to do as ministers. But uh, how many of you guys would say you've got a problem remembering remembering names? All right. You're in a big crowd. Everyone's like greeting each other. And you're like, hey, so and so, so and so. And you're thinking, I know I'm not going to remember anybody's name. Anybody feel like that? Am I the only one? <laughs> How many pr- are, do have a pretty good? Like, I can usually remember names pretty well. Would you say that, right? I was thinking about Braden. Actually, he kind of did this little number, but he's pretty good at remembering names. And <clears throat> some people are, some people aren't. I blame mine on Alzheimer's, but nobody believes me. <laughs> but uh, uh, I just, I have a hard time. And so he, at one time, I remember asking uh, Brother Sam Davison, Brother Sam Davison, you got to realize he pastored a church. He's not the pastor there now, but he pastored a church that was 2,000 people, and he constantly had visitors, and he'd constantly go out and preach in other places, and uh, and he was president of the college, so a lot of pastors would come, and they'd bring ki- uh, uh, their kids with them and everything. And I'm telling you, it's just like he anyone that walked in that church, he would, he would know their name, or if he didn't know them, he would ask them a question, and then they would say where they're from, and he would link to who their pastor is and all that. Before you know it, he knew enough about that person, and he'd remember him like the next time he saw him. And I came to him one time, and I'm like, what is the secret? Like, how do you remember all these people's names and, and know all about them and all that kind of stuff? And he said the most convicting thing that he could have said to me. He was like, well, I love them, and I want to know their names. <laughs> if you really care about people, you know. If I really loved Madison, I would have remembered her name whenever I was trying to go through the list of names. <laughs> I'm just teasing. When you care about somebody, you start knowing about them. And let me just add to that. When you decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start praying for people, you know, I'll never forget the one day I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this to the test. And I, and I got out. This was when I was a member at Southwest. Uh, and they had a directory big directory, you know, of all these different members. And I went through <clears throat> praying for them and looked at the prayer list that we had got on uh, Sunday mornings. They had like men's prayer meeting and, and I'm comparing the faces with the prayers that I'm, that I'm praying for. And I spent like a Wednesday, a couple hours just going through that and praying for that. That night I went to church and, and I felt so guilty because I'm like, why, why, how come I'm not like this all the time? Every time I go into church like this, but that day, because I spent that two hours or whatever in prayer and looking at the names and thinking about the faces and everything, I remember just walking through and w- instead of just shaking hands as a formality, how are you doing, brother? How are you doing, brother? How are you doing, brother? Which is me. I-, I do that a lot of times. That night, it was just like, oh, how are you doing? Hey, how's, how's the arm healing? You know, I remember, how's your dad doing? And I was just like, whoa, I actually know people <laughs> because I took a little bit of effort to actually care about them. And what a shame that we, we, we don't really keep in contact and think about people and pray for them and know what's going on in their lives a lot of times. And uh, 
and you know, I hate it whenever preachers say, now I'm preaching to me tonight because I'm just like, well, you're supposed to be preaching to everybody out here. <laughs> you're supposed to have this stuff down already. But like I said, I feel very guilty about not being better at that, and I want to try, try to. So this is a little bit convicting for me. But in this text, we see a lot of people mentioned. And again, I feel like Paul kept a track of uh, just all these different people that, that were involved in his life and, and meant something to him or that he was ministering to or whatever. And, uh, and, I, and I know that he prayed for them. Look at 1 Thessalonians as an example. There's a lot of places we could go. Almost every book, uh, every letter that he writes, he has a, a whole bunch of names that he mentions. And, but 1 Thessalonians 3... And starting in verse 9, it says, For what thanks can we render to God again for you, for all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God, night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. Now God himself and our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way unto you. So he's telling, hey, I'm wanting to come. I can't wait till I come. I can't wait till I see you again. And, uh, and, you know, I, I see that sometimes even, you know, even like when we have the soul winning events or something and, and there's people that pretty much the only time they, they see each other is online, like, like comments on a Facebook, uh, a li live stream or something. And they, and they don't really know each other super, super well outside of just, you know, social media or something like that. And when they get together, they're hugging and they're like, Oh, you know, I've been praying for this or that. And I'm just like, man, this is what we ought to be as Christians, you know, not just thinking about ourselves and our life and what surrounds us. I mean, typically when you're, when you got a prayer list, it's usually like a whole list of things that, you know, Hey, help, help me. I, you know, I've got this hangnail and, uh, would you pray for me? <laughs> you know, I, I stubbed my toe the other day and, and, but actually if you just think about other people and you're praying for them and everything, uh, just, it just, you know, you just really just love and care about people. That's what we're supposed to be. And that's how definitely Jesus was and, and his disciples and, and Paul, the Apostle Paul is a great example of that. I want to give you just four different categories right back from our text in Romans 16. Four different categories of people that we ought to be remembering and praying for and, and, and thinking about regularly. And, and I think maybe just a good recommendation of how to do that would be to just actually keep this for me. Everybody has different, different things that work for them maybe, but I think I just need, and there's been times in my life where I, in my life where I did this, but uh, like a, to have, to, I have to write it down. I've got to have categories, right? And I think that if I had books, uh, you know, some kind of a notebook or whatever, where I just kept this regularly, maybe some of y'all do. And I put into these four categories, a list of names, and I just constantly kept them before uh, the Lord and, and thinking about them and trying to catch up and communicate with them whenever I can, I would see such a growth in this way, and all of us all of us would. So let me look at this uh, passage in Romans 16 and break this down. People that we need to pray about and remember constantly. Um, the first one is this, I would say new believers and visitors, okay? New believers, you win somebody to the Lord. This is pro this is really another just slap in the face for me. But uh, what had all the souls that I've won to the Lord? Like, what happened to them? Where are they? When's the last time I contacted them? You know, uh, and when you start thinking about that, sometimes it can be really sad. I forgot even where a lot of them were. I didn't write them down. Forgot where the house was or whatever. But you know, if every time we saw somebody come to the Lord. And we really got their name and their face and knew where they were, got their phone number if we could. I mean, at some point you start looking creepy sometimes asking for all their information. Uh, mother's maiden name and social security and all. <laughs> but, but, uh, but, you know, if just go back, contact them, get a hold of them, let them know. And you really are caring. It's not like we're trying to create something here, you know, where we just look like we care so that we can sell a product or something like that. No, this is, we're talking about Christ and the body of Christ. And, and we want to know them. We want to know what's going on. And so, uh, and so, you know, every time we win someone to the Lord, that should be somebody who's on that list for sure, for sure. And we keep checking up on them, following up on them. When's that end? When should you take them off the list? I don't know. Maybe never. <laughs> 
I know uh, many people have this practice, and, and uh, the one that I always think about, because I think it's probably the first time I ever actually saw it, was uh, Brother uh, uh, Kurt Smokey that was, that was with us uh, out there soul winning the other day. And the uh, first time I ever saw his Bible where he, every time he leads somebody to the Lord, tiny, tiny writing, he write their name. And he just goes back and it says where they are if they're from, because he has a, he, he, a lot of soul winning he does is at a truck stop. And so he meets people from all over the country and he'll write their name and where they're from. Some of them are from a different, a different country and he'll write that down in there. And he's got this big old list. And I thought, man, how come I haven't been keeping track? <laughs> By the way, we've got a book back there. At the very least, if you win someone to the Lord, get it written down in that book so that we can pack it and follow up on them. Uh, but better yet, make it your own personal assignment to keep up on that person and pray for them and see what you can do to contact them. Look at our passage of scripture here. It says, and I don't know the whole story about Phoebe, uh, but this is where I get this concept here. It says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sincrea, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saints and that you assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of uh, need of you. For she hath been a, a succorer of many and of myself also. So here's, here's Paul, you know, this, this maybe new Christian or, or somebody he knew that, that is going to go to this body of uh, this assembly here. And he's saying, hey, receive her, receive her. She's done all, all this good. And, and so he, uh, you know, he mentions her. And this is what I think we ought to do when we have new, uh, brand new believers or maybe just somebody who just started coming to the church. Maybe they've been saved for a while, but they, you know, we've had several lately that uh, have been coming, uh, you know, kind of new faces. You know, I was thinking about uh, Brother Josh and, and Alyssa. They couldn't come today. They're out of town, but they've been coming uh, regularly. Did I say it wrong? Alana, Alana thank you. <laughs> See, if I loved them more, I would remember the name. No, I, I knew that. Okay, so... Uh, uh, they've been coming and, and, you know, if you just, if we think about them, you know, know where they are, know what's going on again, not in a creepy way, but just know about them and love them. We need to, we need to work on that. Okay. And so we could really, uh, uh, we receive them as much as possible. Look, not every person is going to be received. I'll get to that here in a little bit. Not everybody is somebody who you just need to welcome just blindly and just accept. Okay. But, uh, but as much as possible, we want to receive them. We want to, we want to know what they, what their needs are. You know, what's they say about uh, assist them in whatever their business is. Uh, you know, we need to uh, kind of know what whatsoever business they have need of. You know, what what's your needs? What, what what's going on in your life? What could we help you with? What's your hardships? We forget about that sometimes, and somebody might come, and they're quiet, and they don't tell you. Now, there's some people that will tell you everything that's going wrong in their life. And then there's other people that just don't ever tell you, and they want to hold on to it and keep it to themselves. And, you know, those people a lot of times are likely to just kind of disappear. And, like, it's what happened to them, you know? Because we don't know. They just weren't the type to talk about everything in their life, and so we don't, we don't really know. But if we could try our best to just show them that we care and learn enough about them, that we're constantly in prayer for them and constantly trying to help them where we can help them, uh, uh, then we would be so much successful uh, in doing that. Let me see uh, number two. Look at verse three. A big portion of this list right here, because of who he's writing to, has to do with fellow laborers and servants of Christ. Starting verse three, it says, Greet Priscilla and Aquila. And look at where it says, My helpers in Christ. Okay, uh, and, and a lot of, he talks about individuals and he talks about the church that's in their house. A lot of uh, times it says well-beloved or uh, uh, the different words that he uses, fellow servant and, and all these are just a, a big list of people who, uh, who, who've done good for him. You know, they, they've, done, they've been good influences in his life. They've helped him. He talks about Priscilla and Aquila and he says, they even laid down their own neck for me. You know, they, they put their life on the line for me. And you, you all, we've all had people like that in our life. You're like, hey, man, that person would give the shirt off their back. You know, he's just, he's just been a blessing in my life, helped me, trained me, taught me these things. Uh, and, and, you know, one of the things we need to do with those type of people is just kind of rehearse in our minds. And even with other people, there's nothing wrong. You know, we don't want to flatter anybody in an in a inappropriate way. But 
there's nothing wrong with letting people know we're thankful for what they've done in our life and, and, and their invest, investment that they've made and kind of just rehearse that. And I notice that Paul is constantly talking about, hey, this, they did this for me and they assisted me here and, and what a blessing. And he wanted people to know about that. And he's constantly praying and giving thanks to God for them and, and what they did. I mean, if we just began to write down in that list that I'm talking about, and, uh, you know, I'm thinking about how fast these pages are going to fill up. As I'm just thinking about people in my life who've invested in me, taught me some things, uh, you know, given to me whenever I was in need or something like that. And, uh, and, and what a blessing. People that have joined us for soul winning. I mean, that's a big list right there. People that we've been together, fellow laborers we shared some times with, and maybe they taught us a little bit about how to present the gospel you know, different preachers in our life that we've listened to and uh, they were a big influence on us and meant something to us, pray for them, you know, think about them, rehearse some of the things that they've done in your life and, uh, and, and uh, talk, talk good about them. I mean, we should be thankful for how much of a blessing they've been. We should mention them in our prayers, giving thanks to God for them. Let them know you're thankful. Again, you know, if, if someone's overly flattering you, that's always a red flag, okay? You're just like, well, that person's just always like, flattering me. You don't want to be like that. <laughs> right? But since sending somebody a little note or some gesture of thanksgiving to say, man, I just want you to know you've been a blessing to me. And, uh, and I'm telling you, there's times people have done that to me. And I've just been like, I had no idea that I was a blessing to that person in this way. But what it meant so much to me to know that person's thinking about me, they're thankful for me. And that motivates you and keeps you going. So think about how many people you might be able to motivate to let them know hey, you don't know what a blessing you were in my life. I've heard of a lot of people going back and contacting teachers or preachers in their past from whenever they were kids, you know, and they were able to, uh, uh, to, to thank them for that. Or like in Brother David's case, apologize to them for the troublemaker they were. <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to ask them about that. <laughs> But what, what a blessing that would be to hear somebody you had an impact in their life and they come back years later and tell you that. Uh, and so here, this is just in the list of people that Paul's always mentioning. I know there's that little part in there. It might have been confusing to you where, uh, let me see here. Uh, in, in verse 22, I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Some people will be like, wait a minute, I thought Paul wrote this epistle. Okay, so here's the deal. Apparently, th this Tertius is like a dictate, or you know, Paul's like dictating this to him or something. Maybe he's in jail. I don't know. Remember the the, the whole background behind Romans, but uh, and so he's actually writing it by hand, what Paul said, and even that last part I think is, is Paul's words. Okay, but when he gets to this point right here. It's like he decides, I'm going to throw this in. By the way, you know, so-and-so, I'm, I'm writing this, and I just want you to also, you know, say hi to, so, uh, to, to these people, you know, Erastus. Uh, so, uh, or actually, I know he's got some other guys, and he's like, oh, they said hi, too. They said hi, hi too. Man, it just, you just see the love of God, you know, for the fellow believers. And I just, I want, we, this was in a day where, do you know how hard it was to send these letters off to this church that lives in a different region. And you, you know, it's not like you can just email it or, uh, or send them a text or something like that. It took a lot of work. I remember hearing a preacher, I think he was a youth pastor, actually, I can't remember, but he was talking to other youth pastors and talking about how, uh, you know, you want to show the, the people that you, that you love them and you care about them. And he was saying, I'm not necessarily recommending this, but he, he was saying like, his practice is to write handwritten letters. I don't know if anybody even still knows how to do that. <laughs> You're writing cursive. They might not be able to read it. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but he wanted to read, write handwritten letters and send them through the snail mail because he thought it was more a more personal touch. You know, I, look, I'm just happy. Somebody every once in a while, somebody will, you know, tech uh, will, on messenger, you know, They'll send me a little text and they'll say, hey, man, I was reading and a lot of people are giving you a hard time. Thank you for standing for the truth. And I'm like, well, what a blessing. Somebody was, you know, blessed by that and they wanted me to know. Had they not took the time to do that, I might have said, you know, what's the point? You know, I'm just going to give up, stop trying to defend, you know, that doctrine or whatever. But sometimes people will encourage you. I remember one time somebody saying, 
uh, uh, a conversation I got into and I was like, maybe that was stupid because everybody was just attacking me and I felt like, you know, I knew I was standing up for right, but you know, and he said that he ended up, his whole Sunday school class was based off of that conversation or whatever. And that meant a lot to me because I was like, that time wasn't wasted. You know, people were actually reading and, and, and it maybe, maybe helped somebody out with understanding the Bible or something. But it's really good to let our fellow laborers know that we're thinking about them and that we're caring for them. How about this? Our kinsmen, all right, our kinsmen, family members, basically. I mean, in this case, uh, you know, probably just people that were from the same town that he was from or whatever. Look at, let's see, uh, verse 7. He says, Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners. Where does he, where's the next one? Verse 11. Salute Herodian, my kinsmen. Now, look, I, again, I don't know exactly what he means, what that relationship, the, the kinship is uh, between these people, but I got to thinking about this. The first people I learned how to pray for when I was a kid was my family, right? Because here's how it went, and I don't recommend this prayer, but the first prayer I was taught as a little bit of kid, before my parents were even going to church or anything, was, now I lay me down to sleep. <laughs> Anybody ever pray that as a little kid? I pray the Lord my soul to keep. And if I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. And then you lay in bed all night thinking, man, I sure hope he doesn't take my soul tonight. <laughs> but anyway, we, we were taught to say little prayers like that. And I don't, don't, don't say those kind of prayers, but I'm just saying. I was taught to do those kind of prayers. And then the next part was the actual prayer. I would say, God bless mommy and daddy and my sister and, and my grandma and my grand. I just go through this list of people in my family, you know. But this is something that we should be constantly praying for and thanking for. And Paul, you know, Paul was called to reach Gentiles. And over and over, he kept having a hard, uh, a heart for the Israelites. And he's like, my prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. And he kept going after them. And he'd go into the, uh, to the uh, synagogues and he'd, he'd constantly be preaching to the other Jews. And then they would reject and he'd get mad and he'd be like, fine. I'm done with you. I'm going to the Gentiles. And the next thing you know, he's like talking to Jews again because <laughs> they're his kinfolk. And he's like, I don't want to see him die and go to hell. And so, you look, we all should feel like that. Uh, these people that contacted us and kind of the reason we chose Columbus as a place to go door knocking uh, yesterday was because somebody contacted and said they have family members in Columbus and they knew that was sort of close to us. And they said, hey, if you guys ever happen to go down that way, you know, would you... Would you go talk to them? They, they won't listen to me. You know, they didn't have the kind of relationship that they listened to. And, and, uh, and so, sure, we would go down there. And, you know, they, they, had, a, they had a desire for that. I remember, uh, I think it was last year, we had, you know, at Christmas time, you know, some people do uh, uh, secret Santa gifts. Have you heard of that? Okay, well, somebody had the idea, we'll do secret soul winning. And, and the idea was, I loved it. I thought it was a great idea. The idea was, think about a family member that you're not able to reach that maybe somebody else can reach, or a friend or a coworker or something like that. And they would write their address down, and we put it all in the offering plate. And then later on, people just selected one of those names, and then they'd get a soul winning partner or whatever. They'd go out to, those, to, to that house and, and try to talk to that, that family member. And I thought, man, that, we should be burdened. You know, I know a lot of times... You can't reach your family. You can't reach your friends that you used to have or whatever because maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe the relationship just wasn't right or they knew you back in your past before you got saved and so it's hard for them to, you know, to, to, to actually have a good conversation with you or, or, or trust that you're actually who you say you are. I don't know. But there's, there's just a, sometimes reaching old family members or friends is hard. Well, maybe you just praying for them and getting somebody else, hey, would you go preach the gospel to them? Would you try, you know? Uh, getting someone else together say, will you pray with me for my, my family member that somebody had reached them? Because you got a heart for them. You love them. They're your family members, you know? So we think about our fellow, uh, you know, fellow Kansans or our fellow Americans, if we're in another. I remember when I was living in Japan, we had a, uh, we had a uh, exchange student program where somebody from off, off base uh, would come to our house for a couple of days and they'd go to school with us one of those days. And then later on, we would go to their house off base and experience the Japanese culture and everything. And then we'd go to their school and we were all spread out. And so uh, uh, I was on a military base. Okay. So there's all these Americans, but then we we're like spread out among uh, all these uh, different families. And then we come together to their school 
And it was weird, man. I don't remember how old I was at the time, but, you know, I, I had blonde hair and blue eyes. And in Japan, if you have blonde hair and blue eyes, they all gather around you and they're like, let me feel your hair. And they're like, hello, hello. That's the only English word they know. Hello, hello. And they're like feeling your hair. And you're just like, this is creepy. And then you're running around. This big crowd of Japanese kids are like chasing you around. And finally, you would see another fellow American. And you'd be like, oh, my kinsfolk. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> well, look, there are people in our life that, you know, we should have a closeness to. And, and we're thankful for them. We should pray for them and, uh, and be concerned about them. I don't have any problem with people who are patriotic. You know what I mean? I know I don't get into politics. I don't fly a flag in church because I don't think there's any place for it in the house of God. I don't, I'm not really big on, you know, let's get our soldiers up here and let's worship the soldiers and all that. Soldiers can't do anything without God. <laughs> so let's just worship God when we're in the house of God. <clears throat> However, if people are patriotic, that makes sense. They love their country. If people are like, man, I want to make sure that these laws get passed or that passed, I don't have a problem with that. That's just not the game that I'm into, <laughs> you know. But if people are doing that, it makes sense because they love their country. They care about their country. Uh, they care about their especially local uh, decisions that need to get, be made uh, and things that are going to be passed. <clears throat> we need to pay, pray for our kinsmen and be remem remembering them. Um, think about who you're... Now, we might, this might enter into a different category, but, <laughs> but there are certain governors and people like that that you need to pray for, all right? Which brings me to my last, <laughs> my last point. Okay. Oh, before I go there, think about this, though. When it comes to kinfolk and family members, all right, what you don't want to do, though, is have your family member, I mean, your family members, and you're close to them, and you care about them, and kind of detach from your church family, right? Because really your church family is, should be a close family too. Look at what the Bible says about that in the, uh, well, first let's look at verse 13, right? Romans 16, verse 13. I find this interesting. It says, salute Rufus chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. Now, do you think Paul and Rufus were brothers? I mean, brothers in Christ, but I don't think they were, they were, I don't think they were, uh, you know, blood brothers, but he says, Hey, salute Rufus's mother. And then he says, and mine, you know why? Cause he thought of her like a mother, you know, now let's compare that to uh, first Timothy chapter five. I love it at church where everybody feels like a big family and they're hugging each other and they're treating each other like, you know, brothers and sisters and mothers and grandmas and, and, and all that. I think it's a blessing. I think that's the way it's supposed to be. 1 Timothy 5 says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity. I like how he says, with all purity. <laughs> you know, you're treating them like a sister. You know, you're not, you're not hitting on them or anything like that. You're treating them as a sister with all purity. All right? I honor widows who are widows indeed, but... You know, that also reminds me of Jesus whenever they say, hey, your mother and your brothers are out there. And he says, who are my mothers and brothers? You know, those who do my will, you know, are, are the same as my mother and my brother. And, and, so, uh, and so you understand how that is our, that is our family. <clears throat> look, at, uh, look at verse 17 now, back in our, in our text. The last point I want to make is this. There's another group of people that I believe he brought before the Lord, he brought uh, in prayer before the Lord and he made mention of them regularly. And that is those who needed to be marked. Those who need to be marked. Look at verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. For they, are the, uh, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. You say, all right, Paul just kind of looked beyond anyone's faults and he only saw the good in them and all that. Well, that's not what we see in the Bible. Now, I'm going to preach about that tonight in Iola, about when we preach the gospel, 
we should, you know, purpose to know nothing about them save Jesus Christ and Him crucified, okay? When you're preaching the gospel, hey, I don't need to know about this person's background and every little thing that they've ever done or whatever. I just want to preach to them the love of Christ and, uh, and hope that they get saved. <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that for the protection of the body of Christ or for, you know, to get rid of hindrances to the work or, or whatever, that there aren't times where we have to consider somebody who's causing harm and be mindful of them and mention them and bring them down. And in this case, Paul, a lot of times, and others in the Bible, call these people out by name and say, hey, we got to be careful about this person. You know, this person has caused trouble. We need to, you know, pray for them, but pray, you know, and maybe purpose that they will get right and they'll come back. But he's, he's, he's marking them and he's making it known. He's not sweeping things under the rug and pretending like it's not there because he thinks it's going to bring peace, but actually he's like, we need to deal with this. And these, these people are on the list too. So, so if I make this list and I get this, uh, you know, notebook pad and I'm making this list of all these different people I need to pray for, there's got to be a list here that says, hey, pray for these people. Well, now I'm not talking about every prayer is just this imprecatory Lord, kill them while they're sleeping and make them suffocate on their, I know people like that. And that's not what I'm saying to do. <laughs> okay. You want to see them either do right, or if they're not going to do right, God, just move them off of the scene somehow so that they're not, you know, causing harm to the body of Christ. Uh, but they need to be marked. They need to, you need to know. And in some cases, Paul marks somebody and later on, they're okay. They're back with them again. They're serving the Lord and everything's fine. But for a time, he had to say, hey, this person is no good right now. And he had to mention them and pray for them. Because when you try to sweep things under the rug, it doesn't ever help. It never helps. Uh, it's always just something that's going to be a thorn in the side, you know, and it's going to cause and it's going to cause problems. So we need to be praying and mentioning and thinking about these people as well, and not being uh, ignorant about the dangers that that are out there. Okay, let me give you a couple examples of that. Second Timothy four. Now, I know this as a pastor. I would rather ignore a lot of those problems and pretend like they're not there because I, I want to I just believe everybody that's part of this church and everything just has all perfect motivation. Uh, you know, they're only trying to do right. They would never try to hinder the work of God or anything like that. But once you see something rising up, you've got to deal with it right away or else it's going to cause problems later on. Okay, so here's what he says, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Cretans to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia, uh, only Luke is with me. So he's just in the, in, you know, he's just telling actually at this point where the people are. But notice how he says, hey, he loved this uh, present world, and so he's forsaken me because he loves the world. You know, that's, that's kind of like called covetousness. <laughs> you know, someone loves the world and they go after the things of the world, so they forsake God. You know what? That person needs to be called out. and needs to be marked and say, hey, this guy's not with us right now. He's got his eyes and his focus on something else. You know, we need to pray for him. We need to do what we can to help bring him back. But, but we do need to make mention of him and recognize the dangers and what's going on. I feel so guilty sometimes when I have to, before the church, talk about an individual or something that's going on. And I don't want to. And I try to say as little bit as possible. But look, they need to know. Because it's somebody they need to pray for and they need to know what's going on. We don't do it to gossip, but we do it to help. 2 Timothy 4, 14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works. And that's a good prayer. Like you don't have to be specific and talk about like how you want <laughs> that person to be injured or something. Because let me tell you what happened. There's, I don't, I'm not preaching the message right now. But when you glory in someone else's hurt... A lot of times that will make God upset with you because you had that feeling. And so what he's going to do is he's going to punish you for having that feeling. And uh, we got to be careful not to do that. You know, we, we don't want to just glory in somebody else's, uh, someone else's hurt. But, but there is a time where we say, God, it's in your hands. You handle this the way you see fit. And sometimes you'd be surprised by what he'll allow to happen to remove somebody from off of the scene who's doing you harm. And, uh, and you know what? No one has to know about it. You don't have to be like, hey, I prayed for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just be glad that God worked it out and the situation resolved itself. Okay? And it happens lots of times. Third John. Third 
3 John, start with verse 4 there. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren, and, and I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to the strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity uh, before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a godly sort, and shall do well, because uh, that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing of the Gentiles, we therefore ought to receive such that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds, which, uh, which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbid, uh, forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth of evil is not, uh, hath not seen God." And so, uh, and so you see here over and over in the Bible, there's times where he had to mark somebody and say that this person loves to have the preeminence, this person loves this present world, this person, and, and, and just call them out not to be gossipy, not to, you know, be judgmental in a, an unrighteous way, but, uh, but to say, hey, we need to know that this person is doing such and such. We need to pray for them. We need to hope that they will you know, do right and come back. But if not, we need to pray that God will take care of that and get them, get, uh, get it off the scene. So there's four, four groups of people, uh, that we need to constantly be thinking about because it's all based in love. All right. We love the Lord. We're going to love people and we're going to love his church and we're going to want good, uh, good to happen. And so we need to, uh, and sometimes that love has to do with tough love even, but we want to do right and think about these things and not just walk with our head in the clouds and like act like, you know, uh, just living in our own world. But we need to actually think about these other people that are instrumental to the work, whether it's the new believers. We don't want to forget about them for sure. You know, we want to see them added to the church. We want to see them uh, baptized and discipled and growing in the Lord. Uh, maybe it's the fellow laborers that have worked with you, invested in you. You know, remember them. Have a part of their life and, uh, and try to be involved in their life and let them know that you're thankful. Pray for your kinsmen and then pray for those who need to be marked. I recommend, like I said, keep a list. Uh, this is what I'm going to try to do. Pray for the people on that list, follow up and find out how things are going. And, uh, it'd be great to see people that in the mark category that end up in another category later on. All right. But the main thing is focusing on others, thinking about them, caring about them, loving them.